What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to a new installment of Lyles Movie Files. Joining me, as always, is the little brother, Jace. How you doing, Broshot? I'm doing well. How are you, Broshot? That's really official and very serious. We've survived. We made it to November. Michael Myers didn't get us, so that's a very positive thing. We made it. Oh, Halloween does kill. It does. <laughs> that movie blows. Gunner, what's up with you? <laughs> I'm good. What's going on? How's life? Uh, just, just trying to survive one bad movie at a time. Yeah, what the heck? It's been like an epidemic. It's been a pandemic of bad movies. <laughs> it's not even an epidemic. It's, it's definitely a pandemic of bad or not well executed things that weren't terrible but not executed well. Movies. It is a real problem that you're bringing up here because I'm, I'm looking at the rest of the year and I'm kind of like, there is no hope. There, there's no Luke Skywalker on the horizon staring up at two suns. There's no new hope. It's no old hope. It's just one lone Spider-Man. We'll get to that in a second. First off, speaking of Marvel, Marvel Studios is dropping its latest Eternals this week. I got to see it a week ago. I wrote my review because, you know, this is one of those rare occasions when I went to the theater. And I was talking to one of my fellow critic buddies about it. We were in this deal last year with the pandemic where every movie got sent to us. And it was great because, you know, as soon as the movie was over, or if a movie was really terrible, we could start writing notes right there. You know, you can't do that in a movie theater because it's like a jerk move and, you know, you can't bring your laptop and start clacking away. And I think some movies take a hit because... If you're home, you have a really quick process. It's like, eh, it wasn't that bad. I'm chilling on my couch. Whatever. I'll give it a I'll give it a C plus, B minus. But if a movie's not so great, and you got an hour to go home, then you're thinking about all the problems with it. And then what starts like a little tread goes to this big explosion by the time you're home in front of your computer. I know this is very insightful to you guys. I know you care so, so much about it. But Eternals was one of those movies where I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get in front of the computer because I've got a lot to slay, to slay, <laughs> say, slash, right. That was a Freudian slip that was correct. So um, I wasn't the only one that had some thoughts about Eternals that were not so positive. And as of right now on Rotten Tomatoes, there are 180 reviews for this film and it has the distinction i need to check right now just to make sure i'm not lying to you i want to be accurate and do this right away as we're doing it live to see if this is in fact the lowest reviewed marvel film and i think it is because i think this is the only one that has the distinction of being the worst mcu film on rotten tomatoes so let's see. So, it's it's currently a lower. World. Yeah, I know that's that's a barometer of bad. What'd you say? It's lower than Dark World. Um, you know it's it's ironic that you asked that because that was the very first one that I put in on my little search here just to Thor: The Dark World is sixty six percent. So if that gives you an idea, that's what it's working with. So, yeah, that's wow. how how Eternals is. Sixty six percent. Eternals is fifty three. It's not like oh, it's sixty. It's gonna keep going back and forth. <laughs> I think wow. at fifty three, there's a very good chance it could hit two forty nine as more critics see it over the weekend. I don't see it going up to sixty to get out of the dreaded rotten status. So you guys have seen these trailers. We've, you know, we haven't had a MCU movie since Shang Chi. What do you guys? What are your thoughts on Eternals before you go to see it? I know, Jace, you were talking about maybe seeing it this weekend. So let me start with you, bro. What is your thoughts about Eternals, and why are you like, well, maybe I'll go see it if I have some spare time, as opposed to it's a new Marvel movie. Of course, I'm gonna go see it. You know, the funny thing is we usually think of Marvel movies as almost this bulletproof, at least you're going to start with a C plus 
and maybe it's us comic book folks, we'll see it. We'll like it even more. This is the first time we saw a Marvel movie that basically out the gate is coming in as like, yeah, this isn't really, this is a whole lot different than a Marvel, your typical Marvel movie. This is breaking, this is on, and some people joke like, this is almost like a DC movie versus a Marvel movie. And that's kind of the ratings. Like a DC movie gets a 59. They are, they might be happy. Marvel's like, whoa, 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 whoa what are we doing here? So you raised and, an interesting point, but I don't want you to go any further before I mention this part. So watching this, all three of us have enjoyed the Mar the Marvel, the DC Extended Universe films. We like what they've done. It's not necessarily how we would probably envision DC movies being made if they were made to, you know, like an MCU kind of template. And this one very much felt like okay, let, let's ground it. Let's make it really realistic and focus on people and their thoughts and their deep emotions. And let's, let's not make them too happy either. Let's, let's make them pretty miserable. And I'm not saying that that's just all the DC movies, but the way that Zack Snyder positioned it, you understood why Superman, Bruce Wayne, to, an ex to a lesser extent, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash cyborg all had issues and they weren't like yay let's go team up and be super friends they had stuff going on eternals tries to do that but there's none of the spark in the oh man i can't wait to see these guys come together like you would with the avengers and so it's this thing of here's nine ten characters coming and we don't know any of them and none of them are really fun so go ahead jace Okay, if I, I mean, that is something I, I do kind of pay for in Marvel movies. I actually pay, I mean, that, that's, I want to pay, go for the escapism, the over-the-top action. I don't need this grounded at all. I mean, especially these guys are almost supposed to be the least grounded of any of the superheroes in Marvels. Like, they have just ginormous amount of power, so I don't need them grounded, reality-based this this proof, I mean, almost like, hey, we didn't do this with Thanos because reasons or some mess. But it's like we need. I need to see like, hey, you guys are the next thing. It take. I mean, not necessarily replaces the Avengers, but has a place alongside the Avengers. Go you know, to the next big cosmic thing, a Galactus or somebody. Durma, I mean, well, we've already dealt with Dormammu, but it's like we need. I wanted to see something bigger than the Avengers, but if you're telling me their humanity, quote-unquote, has almost made them less than, I'm not excited to see that kind of movie. Um, and I, I sadly, I, I read I like read one critic's review, and to back to the first paragraph, I got to something. And no, yours was actually very good. You know, it told me, hey, there's some problems with the movie. But this one didn't say, hey, spoilers. <laughs> We're telling you something that happens in the first 20 minutes of the movie. As soon as I read it, I'm like, I really was like, well, A, thank you for not telling me you had spoilers in your review. And then it's like, oh, that I'm not, and I'm not even going to insinuate what happens in the spoiler because it's like, really? That's the route y'all went in the first 20 minutes? Well, let me say this it's a tool move for anybody to spoil what goes on in a movie. You have the privilege of seeing early. I mean, that is just such a lame thing to do. Unless you're putting in your video or writing right at the top. This contains spoilers, because that way people go, bet, I haven't seen the movie yet. I'll wait till afterwards. But if you're just going to casually mention it halfway through your movie, it's like, come on, dude. You got to you gotta respect people who haven't seen it yet. So I'm trying to think of what happened 20 minutes into it, because I'm trying to remember the movie. But the biggest spoiler to me was way later. But, okay, that's not let me Let me say this. Uh, we lose a character. I need to know that. Again, that's it, it, again. It's like you don't tell if you you say that in the first paragraph of your review. It was like, well, hey, I'm turn, I'm I'm a mad at the movie, but then it's like I'm also mad that I clicked on your review. It's like, and you go on the list of people. I'm not gonna look at your review until after I see a movie. Did they tell you it was lost? Yes. Oh, that's, that's that's not good. 
You're supposed That's to what I was even this. more annoyed with. It was yeah. like, you didn't even, it's like generic. You told me exactly who it is. I'm like, I, I was annoyed with that. So seeing that, it's like, well, that's the direction this, this movie starts off. This is very different than any MCU movie. And think of like when you're introduced to these cosmic, not regular people, you go with the Guardians and you're like, hey, here's what makes them relatable versus you go in this dark direction like, hey, the first five minutes of, say, Batman, Superman, or something like that. It's like, this isn't what I pay for in an MCU movie. And, I, and, it, and it looks like that's what the reviews are based on. Like, this is a maybe a good DCU movie, but this is not a good Marvel movie. So, in, in regards to that, I'm always, a, even with comic books, I hate when the writers resort to, let's make this significant by killing a character. That way... People think it's good. That's not the measure of a good story. It's not like, oh man, they killed people. That really, really did something. It's kind of like, oh, that's all you had left. Okay, so you just had to do that to get people talking about it. So you could have some sort of impact on your story, some legacy. Comic book writers have become really bad about that. From one event, they kill a character. The next event, they bring them back. And it's like, hey, look, they're back. And it's like, you know what? Stop killing the characters. It doesn't mean anything anymore. So honestly, that's that, like, I'll say this. Like, that's what almost ruined the kind of a Star Wars books. Because like when they had finished basically going against the Empire, they created the Yavin Vong, which was a very cool set of bad guys. But in their first book, I think they killed Chewie. It was like, no, 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 no. We don't kill Chewie. Because they couldn't, I don't think at that point they couldn't get the rights, the license from Lucas to kill off Han, so they killed off Chewie. And that's and then that's what started. They basically like half the people you knew were dying. It was, it was like, this is what y'all got. You don't, you don't, you're not making these guys cool because they're killing major characters. It's just like that's not what I, I pay for. And it's like, yeah, that's. I mean, that's almost why I was looking forward to the new trilogy because it's like it erased that series of books that they that's were killing fact. everybody. We're gonna kill everybody. You're like. So hey, with, exactly. with the problem with the Eternals killing somebody, it would be like if you if we started the MCU with if we started with Age of Ultron, like if that was our entry point, and that would be like, oh man, this is cool watching Avengers. But it's like, wait, how is the speedster getting killed from bullets that he sees? And also, I don't care about Quicksilver because I just met him. I don't care about any of these other characters outside of these random segments we've got he's kind of funny oh he's cool i like his powers but you need to build up before you start taking characters off the board in anything it'll be like watching the first guardians and they kill off gamora <laughs> like well she seemed cool but oh well i can think of one exception for that all right what rule you got? suicide squad I don't know you can kill off a bunch of characters in the beginning. You can, you can kill off a bunch of characters in the beginning of the movie and no one would give a shit because who cares? It's Suicide Squad. That's the plot point yeah. of Suicide Squad, right? I thought, like, that's like the, the only... Guys. Yeah. And that's like the only way you can... That's like the only exception to the rule in my, in my opinion. But that's the that's where it worked well, right? Mm -hmm. oh, that was a bright point of the first movie. I was like, oh, well, you know what? They actually need to show that. <laughs> that consequence, right? Yeah. So. And it matters when you do it that way. But if you just go, yeah. yo, here's random superheroes going to kill off. Um, good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. So, Gunnar, what was your thoughts on Eternals? Are you looking forward to seeing this movie? Are you caring about the uh, here's, or what? Here's the thing. Like, I, I'm thinking I'm giving them a pass on everything because they're a Marvel movie. I'm just like, eh. Because here are my signs for, some of my signs for bad movies. Some of it's just straight instinct. I'm like, I don't think that's going to be good. It's not there quite yet. Because I, you know, again, we watched the MCU, or DC, DCEU. So it's like, you know, you can tell there are going to be some spots. But you you know it's going to be an overall good movie once you get the extended cut. <laughs> but, but with Eternals, I feel like, one, that's going to happen. Two... One of the main things about a bad movie that I always like, nope, nope. like Shang-Chi didn't do this. A lot of these other movies didn't do this in their hits, right? Even um, Black Widow, which honestly ranked really high depending on who you ask, 
You know what I mean? As far as if you watch it at home in a theater, most people are like, no, it's good either way. Um, and you wouldn't think this would be the case with Black Widow, but all the trailers climaxed. You know, one after the other after another kept going up, up, up and show, not showing you more, but giving you more height. <laughs> Even Black Widow, right? Like, I'm like, I already know. Like, Black Widow didn't show anything new. It was just different and tailored and hype. You know, Avengers Endgame was just like a... They should have won an Academy Award for those trailers, right? You know what I mean? Like, they should have just won an Academy Award for the trailers at, at that point. So we can't really count that. But I'm trying to compare it to, like, something that didn't... You know, the trailers didn't change that much through one through three. Well, Eternals, the trailers haven't changed much from one, two, three. And I'm like... Like, when I say it didn't change much, I mean at all. I'm seeing the same hype, the same scenes, no new quips, nothing. I'm just like, uh-oh, is this one of those movies that's showing the same, you know, the good parts in the trailer? And we we know those movies, you know what I mean? I mean, there was a bunch in the late 90s. <laughs> it was just like, oh, they just showed the great ones, right? The good parts, and now it sucks. Or the funny parts, and now it sucks. Um, Hangover 3. So I was like... I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be excited about it, but I have to because it's a Marvel movie. I've been wrong before. I was wrong about Guardians. I'm like, ain't nobody going to like this Guardians joint, but true comic book fans. And if we're talking about comic book movies, did I read this comic with interest? Did not read Guardians with interest. I knew who they were. I know what they do. I know who they are. But I wasn't. their storylines weren't interesting to me. Um, Eternals, I got to say... Not that interesting to me. It's a real deal so, in MCU. No, 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 no. But I was wrong about Guardians, so I have to, like, you know, cut that out of my brain. And, again, saying, well, it's the MCU. It'll probably be better. So I'm really them, I really am giving them different passes and different reasons why, if this was just a normal movie, I'd have been like, this doesn't look exciting. What's that Netflix show that's supposed to be about superheroes that looked like it really sucked and it really sucked? Jupiter's Legacy. Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah, it shit sucked. So I'm like, I'm feeling very Jupiter Jupiter Legacy about Eternals. Very, very much the exact same way where it's like, I should watch this because it's a comic movie or, you know, a graphic novel. But I'm just not interested. There's something here that's too bland and it's not working for me. And I can't put my finger on it. And usually, when I don't can't put my finger on something, I don't want to watch it. This I'm still gonna watch mean it. A whole lot because I did like Jupiter's Legacy, but I think mm-hmm. Jupiter's Legacy is better than Eternals. Holy shit! Okay, Gunner, let me. Sorry, make... didn't mean to curse. That's just a shock to me. <laughs> you, 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 you've seen the trailers. Is it because, like, you now on m- most MCU movies, you see the bad guy, you kind of like, or, or like, kind of like how Doctor Strange. If you don't see a bad guy, but you see the stuff that Doctor Strange can do, it because like is your apprehension almost because you think you've seen the bad guy in Eternals and it's like generic CGI character you have no connection with? Is that maybe why you're not excited? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. And that has nothing to do with it. I love villains. I don't care if you had to see CGI or not. That's my weakness. Like I like no really no no bad. like it's it's, it's it's just bigger like it's like a villain you have no connection to like if you saw Thanos you know oh that's Thanos even if it's a C job but it's like this is just random big guy or random big monster that they're fighting it's like no I mean you know henchmen's random henchmen and whatnot I can deal with that it's not a big thing for me it's just there's no climax to these trailers. There's no, not not within each trailer. I'm talking about, like, as you go along, I'm seeing the same thing. I'm like, uh-oh. That means they're showing the best parts, and it's going to be boring or something. And let me touch on something that Jeff said about being, what is it, too human? Not not them being too grounded, but focusing on the humanity and the characters and the deep thoughts and all that stuff that's great in characters that we know, but these are 10 Bamas that I see in every trailer. I'm like, how are they going to get, how are they going to get deep in these three, in these Bamas? And even that's that's the problem. Marvel in three hours of MCU movie time. That's like, you know, or is it two hours? What's the runtime? No, no, no. It's like two and a half. Yeah. Normal MCU time. But even still, how are you going to get that vested one Two, That's like monster movies. No one comes here to see the humans in the monster movie. 
I don't want to see your humanity. You're the freaking internals. I need to see what the hell you do. I need to see the cosmic powers. I need to see where the hell you came from. I want to see, you know, why Thanos was here in the first place. I need to see those backstories. I know them. I just don't like them. I know the stories. I just don't like them. Like, it's they're like always the Guardians, boring. You had like a half hour and you understood the characters. It was like, oh, Star-Lord yeah. is this cocky guy who shoots guns. He has a mask that lets him float around in space. He's got jet boots. Gamora is this kicktail warrior. She's got a sword. Drax is like this hothead. Well, not hothead, but he's like very literal. He's a powerhouse tank. He uses knives. Rocket has big guns that he just shoots because he doesn't care about destruction and damage. Groot says, I am Groot. He's a tree. Got it. You just need a half hour to understand who they are. And, and they, two you know and a half about hours Guardians? of Eternals, I still feel like, what are these guys? Who are they? What are you they know the thing about Guardians? They even did a second movie. They introduced two other characters, main characters, and went deeper with the ones they already knew. Gamora's sister and what's his name? Um, God. Yeah, Yandu. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, and they yeah. on and the second yeah. they had time to, they're not rushing it. I feel like they're, like you said, they're pulling it at DC EU. I think Jason, you said that, right? Who said that? Yeah. One of y'all said that. They're pulling it DC. Yeah. They're pulling it DC EU. Yeah. yeah. You can do just ten too many people that kind of mess in a movie if you've done eight films to set up, like they did with Age of Ultron, because like the when they take five or six to get to the first Avengers film. And there were six Avengers. And then they introduced Vision, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Age of Ultron. And then they peppered in Falcon, um, War, War Machine, Machine. War Machine. <laughs> Maria Hill, a little bit more. So I was like, okay, cool, we got time for it. But 10 in a film is too much, unless you're doing Justice Society, All Star Squadron, Legion of Superheroes, something where it's like, I don't care. These need to have all these characters on here. Their code names tell me what they do. Oh, Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad. I got what he's doing. Right. Colossal Boy. Oh, he's Yeah, but even it. the comics didn't do it that bad. After a point, they kind of cut back some characters, brought them back in, all that stuff. And then All Star Squadron, they ain't start off with 10 Bamas. <laughs> it was a lot of them. But I mean, some of them. It was a lot of them, but they didn't start off with 10 of them. We, yeah. we knew the Green Lantern. Uh, Hawkman, etc. Right. And it was like Liberty Bell and Johnny Quick, we didn't know. So they right. had this balance of new and old. There's no right. connection to the Eternals outside of, oh yeah, we were watching what was going on with Thanos. We didn't do anything. Cool. Very heroic. Y'all sound like Kara until your sister was in a plane. Hilarious. Yeah. Is that is that really like what's what really, like, is, do they really explain that in depth enough? Because it's like, it just seems like the lamest yeah, we just sat this one out. Really, just like they explain not it, even... they explain it, and it makes sense for what they're doing with the movie. I think the problem is, as I'm watching this two and a half hour movie, and the twist comes, it kind of feels like a betrayal of what they've set up. And then I feel like, well, I just wasted my time. I'm not sure if I care about watching more Adventures of the Eternals because of what this twist does, and I just care more about what they show or tease with the post credit scenes. There's two of them, so if you go, make sure to sit through to the bitter end. Okay, let me let me ask the next question. It's like, do you think this movie lends itself to Eternals being folded into or having a sequel in the MCU? It's set up so they can have a sequel. You know, they do they don't do these movies to be one and done. The real question is will I care about a sequel to The Eternals? Like, every other film they've done, I've been like, heck yeah, when's it coming? Oh, man, let me check the websites and the Disney's release schedule. Oh, cool, we're finally getting a Captain Marvel sequel. Here comes Doctor Strange 2. Here comes whatever, you know? I don't feel like that way about Eternals. It's like, okay, honestly, they would probably fare a lot better with a five or six episode run on Disney Plus where they could spend more time on the characters and not worry about anything. Where they that was going to be my suggestion. I was like, why don't they... In MCU without right. the pressure of a movie? Because right now it's looking like it's going to be $70 million. That's not great because that's going to be lower than Shang-Chi and Black Widow's debuts at the box office. 
I don't think word of mouth is going to be great on this film. For the, so the second weekend is going to see a major plummet. And then it's going to be like, why did the Eternals fail? And the real problem for me that I have with Eternals is freaking cast is the most diverse we've seen in the MCU. They've got multiple Asian characters. We've got a deaf actress. We've got mostly people of color in these roles. And it's going to do bad. And people are going to go, well, clearly it's because they have people of color. Or we had a, a gay couple. Or we had a deaf actress. And it's going to be bogus things. And people aren't going to get that the real issue is the story's shaky. And not because nobody knows or cares about the Eternals. Nobody cared about the Guardians of the Galaxy, but they made us care. And I feel like they could have done the same thing with turn with Eternals. And they just dropped the ball. It, so it's, it's really just a lot of, like, it's bad. The, the biggest flaw of this movie is bad storytelling. Yeah, because okay, I was like, I, I mean, I think you, when you said it, like putting this as like a TV show, it's like especially how good Marvel TV has been. It's almost like if you and if before they had said, hey, we're making Eternals a movie, it's like, hey, how about we're introducing a whole new team? I not and this isn't like the X Men or anybody else, unless diehard comic book people are only ones going to know these people. Like, how about we instead of going Ms. Marvel? her and having a feature movie like let's have her in captain marvel then go to her tv show like how about we springboard these guys from a tv show into a movie rewrite the contracts or whatever you need to but there is a whole lot of backstory that needs to be delved into before we get to movie and we'd probably just drop the ball and doing the movie before anything else can come of it all right so their tv show their tv show the movie as i'm thinking as i'm talking to you right now i'm thinking it has a lot of similarities to Inhumans. I knew I was about to ask. I was like, is the reason why they didn't do it as a TV show is because of Inhumans? And again, another comic book storyline that I was just like, this is okay. When I was reading, you know, when I was started trying to read it, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. In fact, I think Inhumans, no, no, it was inter- Eternals. It was Eternals that made me like, all right, let me go see what DC's doing. Because, I mean, I felt like they were boring. And, and I feel, I was like, I was going to make that same comparison. I'm like, is... It could have been a movie. They just, it, the problem with they it was, it. they were, I think, a little bit too gun shy with, uh, how do we explain this chick with the long super hair, this dude that looks like a uh, centaur, um... This other guy with a super huge head. I mean, they needed to lean all the way into the Jack Kirby designs. They have Karnak with a super huge head. Triton, green. Not like, you know, hey, we're going to have him be green when he goes in the water. They needed to go all the way in with the Inhumans. They could have done a movie that could have been what they wanted to do with Eternals. And it would have worked. Instead of doing a half-baked TV show, and let's kind of set it up like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where we're never showing people doing their powers. In S.H.I.E.L.D., you can get away with that because the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. mostly don't have powers. With the Inhumans, you can't cut off Medusa's hair and be like, oops, that didn't work. And Eternals probably should have been a TV show to make us care. And then with, with seven episodes, it would have been a lot more, I would have been more invested. Again, I think this twist in this movie is the worst they've done because it, it echoes a couple of other films, and I really hate it. I want to make sure this part is clear. We'll talk in detail once you guys see it, because I really want to go in about what they did with this with this twist. But I'm not going to, and I've spent way too much time talking about this movie. So hopefully you'll see it so we can talk about it. All right, so next up. Fox is bringing back one of its golden oldie shows from back in the day where you're like, hey, we can do more than just New York Undercover and Martin and all these shows. They're bringing back one of their first reality shows, Joe Millionaire. Hey, fellas, it's been 19 years, 19 years since Joe Millionaire was on there. Now, I, I love this concept when I was watching, you know, as I watched football and saw the commercials, I said, hey, you get this hayseed farmer and have him pretend to be a millionaire and have all these ladies who like the dude because he's got such a great personality. Who cares if he's a millionaire? And then it was like, surprise, he's not really rich. Uh uh-uh. um, I love that. This time they're bringing it back and they're not bringing back 
Joe Millionaire as he looks today because wow, he has like the full on Duck Dynasty beard and he yeah. looks yeah he, yeah, he doesn't look like a millionaire. He doesn't even well, I guess he looks like sort of a farmer. He he uh, he looks like Jim Nine Jim Ninehart stunt double. That's what he looks Wait, like. Wait, the new guy or the no, old the original Joe. Nineteen years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. He's been in dude, he's been in like T V series and whatnot, man. Like he's 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 good. Like yeah, he's, he's just good. like he's I can do whatever I want. But this right. twist, this time, actually a millionaire. This, this twist is amazing. So they're gonna have two Joe. Maybe it's gonna be Joe's millionaire. They're gonna have two guys for the ladies to compete to get. One is going to be poor. The other is actually gonna be rich. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's a good twist. That is a great mm-hmm. twist. I actually. And they're gonna to switch it. Show. Oh, they're both poor. No, they're both no, not. No. They're both playing millionaires. No, I think they're both playing millionaires. But only one That's gonna be out. interesting. Yeah, man. I'm like, sign me up. I want to see that Fox. Good job. Did you know one of the du- the dudes are one of them is gonna be a for real millionaire and one of them is gonna be acting and you know there's some privileged things that come with that. You know what I mean? That you're used to. Yeah. That's so, gonna come so, off where the other guy's not gonna be used to it, right? Yeah. Like it's like it's interesting. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh! The race of the people. Are they both white? I don't know if they've shown that yet. I would assume with Fox we'll have both white guys. But I would assume that too. Maybe but, they could do the real twist and have the black guy be the millionaire. And exactly. that would just blow everyone's mind. I want to see the show. I don't care how they do it. So yeah, that's if the, one of them if the rich one's the black dude, I'm watching the damn show. I will watch I'm this watch shit. It either way, but I'm really gonna be interested if the, if the or minority <laughs> or, or person of no, color. No black. Any black. Regard. No, I need black. I need blue black. I don't need no Israeli dude or whatever. No. I don't need no racially ambiguous dude. No. I need a black dude. I want to see the assumptions that come with it. I want to see it all. You don't want Matt James. Okay. Gotcha. So, the Book of Boba Fett <laughs> had its first trailer. We are looking forward to seeing this, of course. It's another Disney Plus show. And this first trailer, I think, did a great job of, hey, you remember Boba Fett. You like him from The Mandalorian. <laughs> all you new kids. And for all you old heads from Empire and Return of the Jedi. And Fennec's really cool. She's hanging with them. They're going to be doing their thing. We don't have to tell you jack, suckers. You're just going to watch it and tune in. And that's basically what the trailer was. Oh, we don't need to tell you anything. And you know why? Because you don't care. You're going to watch it. You're going to be up at 3 in the morning on the East Coast watching these new episodes. This is one of those deals where I kind of feel like, man, those West Coast cats have it really nice. I mean, just, just, I can stay up till midnight real easy, watch the show and recap it, and still have three hours left. But at three o'clock, I'm like, woo, okay, I got this, right? Yeah, I'm getting a little sleepy. Somebody's getting all tuckered out. What'd you guys think of the trailer? I'm ready for it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. See, that's the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell Eternal's been doing, but that's the trailer, right? Yeah, they got you like, right out the bait, right out. Yeah, the I'm bait, good. And it's like, oh yeah, Bingo. let's do it. Jace, what do you think? I mean, very much less so. You're like, okay, you got Boba Fett, you got Phoenix Sean. Hey, there's some action going on. There's some, you can see there's some underworld, underworld dealing going on. So there's like, there's gonna be story with that. You can see, like, I mean, the book of Boba Fett. I mean, you're already like, oh, this is gonna be like a crime. Know, how does he take over after Jabba the Hutt's gone? So it's like you got built in storylines to go from. And because it's worked very well, you're like, oh, okay. This is, and this is Dave Filoni's, like a John Favreau, uh, DC, I mean, I'm sorry, a Star Wars universe. So you're, already, you're like, okay, I trust this is in good hands. Oh, I mean, a teaser trailer with a little bit of action. Sign me up. And that's where I am. Right. All right, so I hope you guys have cleared your schedules for next Friday. November 12th is Disney Plus Day, which means Disney's going to unveil a bunch of new shows, offer a lot of new teaser trailers, trailers of shows that we already know are coming, and reveal a bunch of other stuff. Uh, What we can basically expect, a teaser of Andor, uh, the Cassian uh, Rogue One character. That should be really good. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And most likely, Obi Wan Kenobi, and maybe with with my boy, who's much maligned, but is now like one of the go-to characters for memes because of his conversation with Padme. 
Um, Anakin. Anakin? Annie? Yes, Darth Vader is going to be in this joint. And I don't know how to explain how much I can't wait for Obi-Wan Kenobi's show. Because it's the crew that's running this Disney Plus Star Wars shows working on Obi-Wan Kenobi. We've got Ewan McGregor, Hayden Christensen. I don't need anything else. I am sold. I'm staying up 3 o'clock. I'm going to have two coats with me just to make sure there's no problem. Chase, what do you think? Uh, I, I, those shows you mentioned are good, but I'm also looking forward to seeing like maybe a teaser of Ahsoka. As we kind of talked about, that being kind of the back uh, end around way of adding uh, air to the Empire into live action Star Wars. And yes, even if that doesn't happen, I still I mean mentioned Grand Admiral Thrawn. I, I'm I'm sold on wanting to see that on on wanting to see that. And I definitely I mean if you have me like you just give me a little like half a teaser of Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader and a lightsaber duel and Tatooine, I'm pretty much sold on it. I mean, I know it shouldn't happen, but I mean, it's just like. Even in a dream sequence, I'll, I'll just sign me up for It'll watching take, that. Nah, they said, they said we're going to have a duel with those guys. But now that she said that, I'm kind of wondering if we'll get Ahsoka talking to Force Ghost Anakin. Yeah, well, unless... Uh, the only way, because this is supposed to be five years after in, uh, Battle of Indoor, so it should, be, Ghost. it should be Force Ghost that everybody hated because, you know, he sucks as an actor, and now we're like, oh my <laughs> gosh, why do, why do we so mean to you, Annie? Like, so. Yeah. Well, y'all, y'all, y'all were wrong. And kind of, we're supposed to, I mean, you know, Star Wars is not the only property that Disney Plus is rocking. We're going to see some more Marvel stuff. So I assume that means we're going to see a teaser trailer of Miss Marvel, maybe She-Hulk, maybe even Moon Knight. So much stuff. What are you looking forward to seeing on that Marvel side? She-Hulk. Like, I want to see what they do with it. I want to see how they tie it into this Hulk. Because where they left this Hulk was, like, interesting. But Professor, not Professor Hulk. Well, Hulk. I guess he's Professor Hulk in this one, right? What, what, which one? What do they call this one? Uh, I think Hulk. they call him just Professor. He's like Smart Hulk in the comics. Smart Hulk, but yeah, the layman's will call it Smart Hulk, but he's really Professor Hulk, I guess, at this point, right? So, yeah, I want to see how he goes from there. Maybe we'll see him, maybe Joe fix it. I don't know. One of the two. But <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to seeing how that story evolves, how he gives her the blood, all that stuff. And then what she does with it. I think the actress is perfectly dead on dead on um <laughs> because she's supposed to be unassuming right yeah. and then yeah i mean dead on so I, i'm really looking forward to that one it's like okay you know i don't have jessica jones anymore but <laughs> we'll see i want to see the she hulk going on well maybe and they're supposed to be in new york too so maybe there you go maybe you will who knows <laughs> They're in talks or rumored to be in talks or whatever. I'm like, just tell me yes or no. I'm tired of this in talks limbo ambiguity. I think we're going to have to wait for Spider-Man. So. Yeah. yeah. Have, they ta- have they kind of uh, said, is what, what is She-Hulk a CGI version or is it going to be like kind of a bodybuilder lady? I assume the same way they've been doing Mark Ruffalo's Hulk. CGI to build her up as, you know, using her likeness. As a CGI character, that always. You think there's gonna be like a Luke Ferrigno type situation? I mean, hey, I'm 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 always playing now after we've seen super strong Ruffalo's Hulk. We don't need to do that. Well, I don't know how how big she's gonna be compared to like I mean, because I know like I most my assumption on the Sea Hulk is kind of she's is big. I mean, she's not as big as Hulk. She's but she's you know for. It's intelligent. She's, she's always been like kind of like yeah. I'm just I'm, I Hulk strength, but depends not. on who drew her. Okay. Well, they've done this modern thing where she's been like super size. It's stupid. The cool thing oh. from how I hope and envision they're gonna do her is she's gonna be the super smart lawyer still rocking as the Hulk, as She Hulk right. with a little bit more confidence. So she's gonna have a lot more personality than the demure. To mirror lawyer, the less confident lawyer before she becomes She Hulk, 
And that was the coolest thing because she was not at all like the big dumb dummy Hulk. She was all her intelligence was there, and you know she was able to do her thing. And then yeah, less inhibitions and all that stuff. Because yeah, yeah. Right. between her and Luke Cage, I don't know who had the who had the best sex life in the comic books, but uh, yeah. <laughs> probably, probably she <laughs> she, she that one. Yeah. All right, fellas. Well, it is that special magical time of the week. Do you have any nominees for Dummies of the Week? And Jace, let's break from tradition. Let's start with you. Do oh. you have any nominees? Yeah. So my Dummy of the Week is whoever in the American Music Award decided that they needed to have Party B as the host of the event. Hey, I love Cardi B's music. I think she's super entertaining. But uh, if you guys have ever listened to like kind of her Instagram stories and kind of like try and follow those, it's, it's, it's kind of a struggle. So trying to have her kind of lead uh, an award show, it, you know, I don't know. I mean, hey, you might as well put the kids to bed because I'm thinking there's going to be some words uh, that are used that are not family friendly. <laughs> and you're just going to have to deal with it. It's like, it may be one of the most, oh, I mean, viewed award show would make me look like an idiot. But right now, to think that's going to be a well thought out presentation, yeah, I think you're kind of going to be the W of the week for me on that. In some universe, I'm sure she'll work out. But in this one, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a controversial article about her saying the N-word a lot. There's going to be so much controversy. I mean, I can imagine... I'm positive that's going to be it. ...clutching their pearls, watching this award show that they would never otherwise watch. After after the Grammy show with, with the... They actually did WAP. I mean, yeah, I, I, think, I think the clutching pearls part is just done with. Yeah, I can, That was hilarious. You know, if you pause for like two seconds... You can still hear the screams of Alderaan and and all the senators going. <gasps> right. Yeah. No. As they also paused and fast forwarded multiple times. Exactly. Clarification. Slow motion. I need to make sure I'm I'm talking about what I'm seeing. I need to see what I'm like complaining about. I need later. to make sure I'm offended yes. over and over again. Over and over and slower and slower. Right. All right. Where, where's my blue pills? Right. My nom- Did I say offended? I'm in another old world. Huh? <laughs> Here's my old face. All right. My nominee is the great Aaron Rodgers. And you know, I wish I brought a bat with me because I always like to take my bat shots at A Rod and the one Tom Brady. This is going to be the one time in recorded podcast history. You are going to hear me actually stand up for Tom Brady. Tom Brady was suspended four games for put a little in some footballs. A-Rod was like, yeah, I've been immunized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you've been trolling, but man, there's some great memes already about A-Rod and his non-vaccinated status. This joker was so worried that he was like, nah, I'm not going to abide by the NFL's policies. I'm not going to wear a mask to these press media sessions because then they would go, hey, you're wearing a mask. Are you not vaccinated? So he kind of sidestepped. He did a little, he did a little Terry Crews around it and was like, hey, yeah, now I've been immunized. And now the great A-Rod has indeed con- contracted COVID. So nobody then the NFL decided to do a double check and made sure that this dude who was coming up to them with a, hey, I have an alternative solution for my vaccination. They were like, oh, I guess he got it. And I guess the Packers decided to go along with it. So my proposal, six games, seven games, for seven game suspension for A-Rod for lying to the NFL and putting the media at risk. Yes. Uh, Jeff, will this have an alternative reason to getting rid of Rodgers for – the playoff stretch? I don't know what you're talking about. This is for the safety, safety and sanctity security <laughs> of the Both game. Health and safety of the game. Yes. I mean, like, if, if, if you really are, like, to a... suspend the, the little lowercase goat for deflating balls, I think we can, we need to give A-Rod a suitable punishment as well. Uh, 
I mean, there there is going to come a point because it, it, they do because he probably was not getting tested like everybody else had was following. Right. And hey, Ron like Adams got COVID. Cole, Cole Beasley said, hey, I'm not going to take the test. So he's getting like, you know, you know, test every week up his nose. He's and getting Rogers the is Game like, of Thrones treatment where people were going, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> Cole Beasley was like, whatever, suckers. I'm proud to be non-vax. I don't care what you say. And you know what? I can respect that. A Rod's trying to act like he's really John Wick. You're not going to see me, the Boo Boo Yaga, the COVID found you. So, yeah, that's why you're my nominee for Dummy of the Week. Gunner, do you have a nominee, good sir? I have a group that's a nominee, QAnon people, waiting for JFK Jr. to come back to life in Texas. And there are multiple people out there right now. Yeah, that was an interesting scene. I, I, I don't know how. I, I, I kind of want to study how psychologically you get like this, and just be like, I'm just gonna believe these weird things and create. But what kind of trauma in your life had to happen? You'd be this effing stupid. I know what it was. I know what it is, Gunner. <laughs> they watch WAP on the Grammys. Yep. Bring it all back. Too many. All right, well, fellas. Thank you, as always. Thank y'all out there for listening. This episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed.